Hello everybody, welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Um, you know, people keep talking about how we need more research to figure out why are so many people experiencing dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And I've been saying for years, we already know why, it's been well documented, so I'm going to give you some more research that documents it. Um, there's a big connection between dementia and Alzheimer's disease and cardiovascular disease. The mechanism is easy to understand. The brain uses about 60% of blood glucose and requires a very steady supply of oxygen. And guess how those things get to the brain? You guessed it, your cardiovascular system. So if you have cardiovascular disease, coronary artery disease, automatically you are at higher risk for dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Well, 40% of the people in our country are going to die, and in other westernized countries are going to die from cardiovascular disease this year. Uh, so, or 40% will eventually die from cardiovascular disease. So it's no surprise that we have an explosion of dementia and, and um, Alzheimer's disease. So to look at this association, researchers took 4,000 people average age 75. None of them had a history of heart attack or stroke, but they had a history of cardiovascular disease or were considered at high risk because they had hypertension or diabetes, they were smokers, something like that. None of them had dementia at the beginning of the study. So at baseline, they all took tests that evaluated higher level thinking skills indicative of executive function, and then they were assigned to one of three groups based on the results and just simplify it low, medium, and high. Okay? After 3.2 years of follow-up, those with the lowest scores on the test for executive function had an 85% higher risk of coronary artery disease and a 51% higher risk of stroke compared to participants who had the highest scores. 176 out of 1,300 and some people with the low scores had a coronary event versus 93 out of 1,308 in the group with the highest scores. So there was a direct relationship between coronary artery disease and dementia or the loss of cognitive skills. The researchers concluded that lower executive function is associated with a higher risk of coronary artery disease and stroke and may be an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So this is one more reason to eat a low-fat, plant-based diet like the one we recommend at Wellness Forum Health. Um, it's been proven to prevent reverse coronary artery disease, and people who do this will save their hearts and their cardiovascular systems, probably their lives, or lengthen their lives some, and as it turns out, will preserve their brain function as well. So some of these things that I talk about all the time, the reason I talk about them all the time is they affect a lot of people who are given a lot of mythology about what to do. So uh, anyway, low-fat plant-based diet, good for the heart, good for the brain. All right. Um, now I want to talk about, right along the, this uh, conversation about cardiovascular health and that sort of thing, fat in the diet, which we know is bad for cardiovascular health. So the current dietary recommendations, um, which are in, notoriously inaccurate in our country, recommend that people change the type of fat that they eat. And uh, so that's, that's supposed to improve cardiovascular health and other markers for disease and all that sort of thing. So a recent meta-analysis was undertaken to examine what happens when you change the type of fat in the diet? Does it make a difference in your health? So the researchers analyzed studies that looked, in difference, that looked at differences in various types of fat, saturated, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, trans fat, and then omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid supplementation. And then they compared those with the incidence of disease. Now they did two types of studies. They did observational studies which um, uh, where they looked at the top third for intake of fat versus the lowest third, and then um, interventional studies where supplements were used. The analysis showed that people with the highest intake of trans fat have more coronary artery disease than those in the lowest third, and less heart disease when, um, with those eating the highest omega-3 versus those eating the lowest intake. No significant differences in the top third and bottom third for saturated fat intake, no significant differences, top third, bottom third, for omega-6 fatty acid intake. Omega-6 is found in animals. Now, uh, I'm going to come back to that. You're probably thinking, oh my gosh, Pam Popper's been wrong all of these years. She's been telling us not to eat saturated fat, and it doesn't make a difference. It does, trust me. We'll come back to this. Most of the intervention studies involve the taking of omega-3 supplements. The analysis showed that they didn't do any good at all, not, no lower risk of coronary artery disease. For fish oil, there was a slight advantage. It wasn't statistically significant. So some of the study results confirm what we've all been talking about for years. Trans fat, bad idea, increases your risk. Omega-3 supplements, fish oil pills, not really beneficial. 
But I need to come back to this. What about this idea that there was no difference between the high intake and lowest intake of saturated fat? Uh, does that mean that saturated fat intake is okay? Does it mean that you're better off eating it? Well, actually not so much. Um, the, first of all, the people eating more saturated fat weren't better off. They were just about the same as the lowest third. But there was a very important question that was not answered. If you're not eating so much saturated fat, because it's pretty dense in calories, what were those people in the bottom third eating? Okay, so I, I think about our own, my business partner, good friend, and someone you guys know well, Del Shroff, Wellness Farm Health, author of the Forks Over Knives Cookbook, who was a vegan, eating no saturated fat, weighed 500 pounds when he showed up at Wellness Farm Health, all right? So this study did not look at what those people were eating and that low saturated fat intake. And I've, and I've looked at these kinds of studies before. I remember looking at one where the saturated fat intake was the same, but so was the, um, the, the fiber intake. You know, the people in the, in the lowest sat fat uh, category were eating 15 grams of fiber a day. Not too much plant food, probably too many toaster pastries in, in that group. So the point here, this was a reductionist study. It looked at fat only and ignored the fact that dietary pattern is important. So eating more or less saturated fat or more or less blueberries or salad or asparagus, that's not the key to health. The key to health is the dietary pattern. So what this study really showed is that when people eat different types of bad diets, they end up about the same. It doesn't show that saturated fat doesn't matter or that people that eat saturated fat are okay and people who don't are not or anything like that. Um, these are all claims being made by people who cite this and other similar studies. It doesn't make any difference if you lower your saturated fat intake. It makes a huge difference if you change your dietary pattern. So our advice is not to just reduce the fat. It's not just to eat more salad. It's to look at the whole dietary pattern and to reduce the intake of all fat down to 15% or less of calories. And, um, and for people who have serious health issues, it, it should be even lower. So I'm gonna continue to remind people that these reductionist studies looking at a single issue show basically nothing and they're completely blown out of proportion by people who are looking for justification to tell people to eat animal foods because I think those people want to eat animal foods, they want some company, and they want other people doing it too. <laughs> so, but they're, but they're counting on the fact that you're not going to go to the trouble to look at the study, analyze the results, and see if what they're really telling you is true. I guess that's why you watch this channel every Tuesday and Thursday. You're counting on me to do that for you, and I'm happy to provide that service. All right, that's all for today. Have a wonderful uh, rest of the week and weekend. And there will be no broadcast on Tuesday because Monday's Labor Day, and it's an excuse for me to take a little tiny break from doing so many things. So I'll actually be back to you a week from today on Thursday. In the meantime, have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Stay safe. And as you're at uh, picnics and family gatherings and that sort of thing, when you're getting ready to reach for something, hear my little voice in the back of your head asking you if this is really a good idea, okay, before you eat it. And some people tell me they think about that and they put it back. That makes my heart sing. All right, that's all. Have a great week, and I will speak with you next Thursday.